What's up, ladies and gentlemen, Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my public YouTube channel. What exactly are we going to be talking about in this today's video? We're going to be talking about a very interesting, a very secretive, and a very deep subject. I'm sure you have a little bit of a gist of what we're going to be speaking about just off the title of this YouTube video. So going right into it, we're going to be talking about the hell realms and the hell dimensions, which are also associated with the clip off and the tree of death. And I'm really going to be explaining what this all means, what this all represents, how this actually manifests itself in the world today so that you can recognize it when it shows up. If this is something that you're intrigued by and you want to know a little bit more about, because truly there are not many people that know about this subject, let alone talk about it, then you have one thing to do and that is simply to stay tuned. I will see you on the other side. All right, let me first start with introducing myself. My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist. I am fully initiated in the entirety of the Kabbalistic tree. I'm studied when it comes to the 22 major arcana of the tarot deck. And I'm also studied when it comes to planetary energies in direct association with astrology. All right, now with that being said, let's move right into the subject. So let's take a little bit of a look at the hell dimensions, the hell realms. I'm sure a lot of you listening have heard maybe other spiritual teachers or maybe other people in the community itself talk about such thing as hell on earth or such thing as interdimensional planes that are hellish in nature. Basically what I'm saying is that I'm sure a lot of you here right now that are listening understand there is such thing as a darker aspect or a darker side to this entire evolutionary process that all of us find ourselves in. You can't pretend like it's not there. You can't ignore it. It clearly exists whether you want to believe it or whether you disbelieve it. All right? So let's take a look at it. In regards to the universe, there are going to be, for the most part, two primary aspects that run throughout pretty much every single dimension that exists. And those two aspects are two different poles. We can almost visualize them as being pillars. We have the positive pillar and we have the negative pillar. I've explained this before on other YouTube videos I've made, which discusses that life itself is intertwined and interweaves between positive and negative. Everything that you experience has some form of balance within it. It has some form of a negative charge as well as a positive charge. So the same thing takes place when we look at the Kabbalistic tree, for those of you that don't know about the Kabbalistic tree, this is the tree of life, and this is basically a roadmap for spiritual and soul evolution, and the Kabbalistic tree is what most of the professional orders of occultists on this planet today use as a guide to help themselves become advanced initiates. So just like what I'm saying with the tree of life, there is a negative aspect to that tree. And that negative aspect can be found on the other side. Just like when you see a coin and you have a heads and then you have a tails, one on the front, one on the back. The same thing with the tree of life. Right on the back side you have the tree of death. The tree of life is traditionally associated as 
the Sephiroth, the Tree of Death, is traditionally associated as the Klipoth. When you break down the word Klipoth from its Hebrew root, you're going to come up with a couple, a couple of translations. One of those important translations is going to be shells. I think another one is harlot, um, shells and something harlot. These are a few of the translations it can turn into. But shells is one of the more common understandings of how we look at the tree of death and translate that name of the clip off. So when you look at the tree of death, you have all these different spheres, just like what you see on the tree of life. Primarily, you have 10 solid spheres. And once again, you have that same 10 spheres in the tree of death, except what you're getting instead of the tree of life is you're getting the more so negative association or the negative polarization of all the different planetary energies that are connected to those spheres. And because of that negative charge, what you're really tapping into is the realm of the anti-being. You're tapping into the realm of the unmanifest when you're dealing with the clip off. The tree of life with all the different planetary energies associated with it, once again is going to tap you into the more so positive polarized aspects of those planets and it's going to show you more of an influence of the manifest tree of death unmanifest anti-being tree of life life being all right and clearly based on the person that you are you are a soul and you are a spirit and you are going to evolve eventually at some point in time on this planet and you will eventually at some point in time move out of this density that we're in right now and transition into the next. And the way that you transition by evolving is through one of these trees. So if you're someone who's on the positive polarity, you have the tree of life. If you're someone who's on the negative polarity, you have the tree of death, the Sephiroth and the Klipoth. Now, once again, since this video is primarily focused on the Klipoth and the Hell Realms that we live in, let's dive more so into that. So, as I said, the Klipoth translates into shells. And just like what you would see if somebody was let's say for example bullied at a young age you have someone that goes to school let's say they're seven years old then there just happens to be a kid that goes to that same school who's 13 years old and the 13 year old starts picking on and bullying the seven year old now unconsciously and maybe even consciously that seven year old is going to start developing as he's getting bullied a shell around his energy field. A shell is basically, if we want to look at it in more so uh, practical terms, it is an internal trauma. It is a deep embedded fear, anxiety, and we could even say pain that is inside of that child or inside of that kid because of what he had to go through or what he had to deal with while he was getting bullied by this 13 year old who was just picking on him because he wants to feel better about himself. I'm just trying to paint a little bit of a picture so you can understand what the shell is associated with and what a shell actually is. So the seven year old boy who's getting picked on is going to, as he grows older, develop a shell towards individuals most likely who are bullies that remind him of that same 13 year old who bullied him when he was younger. So that boy may carry a deep hatred or a deep unconscious anger or even fear or anxiety towards that archetypal type of person, towards someone who's a bully. And that shell, if the person doesn't understand 
what it is that is creating the shell can actually dictate that person's life and their behaviors. Once again, to give you the practical perspective, it's like when you have a deep internal trauma, if you don't understand that you are traumatized and you don't understand that you have something inside of you that is making you fearful or making you angry and you haven't gone back to that experience that caused that trauma, that trauma based on the emotions it produced deep down inside of you will unconsciously cause you to act in a certain way in your day-to-day -day life. Thank you for the, for the confirmation. I appreciate it. So this is how a trauma controls someone's life and that's the same concept with having a shell around your energy field because of something you've been through that was traumatizing that caused you to block off or shut off a part of your true self, a part of your ability to realize you're always in the right place at the right time, nothing happens to you for no reason, and no matter what happens to you, you truly have all the tools to navigate the adversary or navigate the catalyst to then heal and become a more empowered, better version of yourself. But see, a lot of people don't understand that concept. So when they go through something that was traumatizing, they don't like to feel it and go back to it, clearly because there is anxiety, there's fear, there's pain that's connected to it. And because they don't go back to that experience inside of themselves and they don't feel, they're unable to heal and they're unable to process and ultimately unable to become an observer, which then inherently means there's going to be a lack of understanding of what that traumatizing experience they went through can actually turn into. Because any trauma that you've ever been through is actually meant to take place. There's no one that can avoid traumas. I'm no different, you're no different, we all go through traumatic experiences and they're meant for a reason. They are intentionally designed by the source itself to cause someone to learn how to use the trauma to then process, heal, and step into a more authentic version of the self. So as I was saying, we live in a world today where people don't understand that and they don't go back, they don't go inside. Rather, they stay distracted. They scroll on their phones. They use drugs with the wrong group of people. They try to leave all that they try to leave their house. They try to go out. They try to distract themselves from going inside to heal. That is a shell. And most people on our planet today are highly shelled. And this concept gets deep. So what I'm basically saying is most people on our planet today are in the clip-off. Most people are living in the clip-off because they are being controlled and their actions are dictated by the shell that surrounds their energy field, which they're truly unconscious of. And the root of it is a it, the root of it is some sort of a trauma, but once again, on a more so shamanic level, that trauma manifests as an actual energetic shell. So when we look at the clip off, we're looking at a tree of traumatic circumstances and traumatic experiences that very much so controls people's lives and causes them to be stagnant if they don't know how to process it. Now, looking at that same clip off the tree, clearly if you're someone who's wise and you're someone who is understanding of the process of healing and self-development, recognizing that challenge leads to potential, then clearly the clip off the tree could be a valuable tree to embrace, work with, embody, so that you can really step into high levels of personal power. And that would be primary for black magicians. All right? So that is the main concept of the shells. Shells manifest as traumas around the energy field, which prevents a person from becoming or being their highest self or their true self. So when we look at the clip off, we're looking at a tree that is the part 
of our multiverse today that enslaves and traps most people, not because the tree inherently is evil or whatever produced the tree is evil, but simply because the human species that is influenced by the tree has a lack of awareness on how to know the self or how to heal the self. So at the end of the day, the human being, the human species is responsible for the state that the human species is in. Because as I said, there are people like myself that exist on this planet right now, I'm a human being too, and that tree of death, the clip off, is a source of power for me. I'm not shelled within the clip off, I gain power from the clip off by undoing the shells. So it's all about what you're doing and how you're using the energetic influence. So once again, the tree of death is associated with anti-being. It's associated with anti-matter even. So when we look at the energy of death itself, death is transformation or energy tending to change. And when something dies, the dying process is clearly an uncomfortable process when we're looking at it from a more so human perspective or an ego perspective. But when you go deeper into the soul and the spirit, death literally only means energy tending to change. Because when you die, there is a rebirth to something new. So when you're embracing the tree of death, you can imagine things start to die. Whether that's psychological, mindsets, belief systems, ideas, behaviors, emotional states, relationships, physical attachments, spiritual attachments, things start to die because when you're dealing with the clip off, you're dealing with the tree of anti-being, which means the deeper you go down that tree, the tree of death starts at the top and goes down rather than the tree of life, which starts at the bottom and goes up from its initiatory perspective. The deeper you go down that tree, the deeper you're moving into the state of completely non-being. You are stepping into the essence and the embodiment of the void itself, the nothingness, the ultimate nothingness, which actually then produced the all. So clearly, dealing with the tree of death takes a lot of discipline and it takes a lot of awareness and seriousness to realize that as you're working with that tree or as you're choosing the path of the real black magician, there is this process that you have to go through, which is a very uncomfortable process. It's a very disillusioning process. You have to truly be ready to sacrifice everything on the table that may not be in your best interest to step into the complete real awareness of what and who you, excuse me, of what and who you are, which is the non-being. Once again, the deeper you go down that tree. And then once you've achieved the non-being, you now have a foundation to be something, to build an empire, to rule even, because you understand the roots. And it is only within clipothic influences that are coming from the tree of death and the negative aspects of the tree itself where you actually learn the truth of who and what you are, which is the non-being. Because, I mean, once again, there cannot be being without first a non-being. So this is oftentimes why individuals who are real black magicians who work with the clip off are some of the most wise people that exist on the planet itself. This is why the people that have the ability to completely control the matrix on, an, on a psychic level are able to do what they do and literally sit back and laugh at the mass collective in regards to how they get caught in the matrix and don't know how to make it through. It's because the people 
that have that level of power had to go through a very excruciating process of death of the self and death of many other aspects of being to get down to the root of the void of non-being to then realize now I can be the king, now I can be the queen, now I can rule. So hopefully you're able to understand what it is that I'm trying to communicate right now. But once again, you can imagine how disciplined somebody has to be to really get to the bottom of that clipothic tree of initiation. Not a lot of people have what it takes because of how challenging it is. I mean, we all want to be something. We all want some sort of a security. We all want to know what's going on. But what if I took all that away from you? What if I put you in a dark room where there's a maze and I told you, now you have to listen to your intuition to find your way out of this maze. You can't see it, but you can feel it. Clearly, there would be a lot of people who would start panicking at that point. And they would say, I want it now. I want, it, I want the light to turn on. I want to see the maze. How am I, how am I going to do this? I can't do this. It's not going to work. But the wise individuals, the ones who truly trust the process and understand that nothing happens for no reason, will still themselves and sit in silence and ultimately listen to their intuition to try to guide, them, to try to guide themselves through that very maze. Not saying that they're not going to make mistakes because they absolutely are, but they will listen and trust the process. And every mistake that will be made will ultimately be turned into a valuable lesson. That is the essence of the tree of death. And within that dark maze, within that anti-state or that anti-being, you are learning huge amounts of knowledge. You are developing and integrating powers that most people don't know how to tap into. Because when your foundation of awareness is built on being, but you don't know the root which created the being, then your power is not plugged directly into the socket. You're lacking a fundamental awareness to be able to unleash or conjure real power. But for the individuals that are able to really sacrifice everything and not need any sort of security or not need any sort of control with the sole purpose of just becoming the nothingness or becoming that void, it's from that moment where the real phoenix rises from the ashes of the nothingness and transforms into something extremely powerful. Now, on top of this subject, there is no one that escapes the clip-off. There is nobody that escapes the negative influences of the tree of death. Once again, the entirety of the tree itself is all one tree. It all works together. Just like even with the negative polarity, no one escapes the tree of life. It's the same vice versa. We're all being influenced by both positive and negative energies at all times. So it's important to understand how to accept and how to work with those energies, specifically coming from the tree of death, because we are trained from a very young age within this matrix that we live in to fear, to suppress, and to avoid darkness to avoid the negative polarity. We're told that it's evil. We are told that it's wrong. We are told that God is at war with Satan. We are told that this person is bad and you should hate them or you should separate them from society because they are not good rather than asking them, why are you like that? Rather than trying to understand for yourself, why do they behave that way? What is this teaching me, what is this teaching the world about this person's behavior? See, these are the deeper questions. And once again, no one escapes the clip off, especially in our today's time. The matrix that we live in today is controlled by entities 
like myself who are Klippothic rulers, Klippothic initiates, who use the tree of death in almost everything you listening to this right now consume as some form of entertainment. I mean, just like what we saw with Balenciaga and all this crazy controversy that's going on, that's only one little sliver of what is actually going on behind the scenes. But a lot of this stuff, especially to somebody like me, who's a professional occultist, I see all the satanic, I see all the demonic, I see all the clipothic, that's the key, influence that's literally placed in all avenues of life itself. Is it wrong? Is it evil? Should it not happen? No, it's life. That's why we incarnate here as human beings. We incarnate here to go through catalyst. We incarnate here to go through some form of pain, suffering, and resistance. And that is what the negative polarity brings. So there is no escaping the clipothic influences that are happening in the world around us at all. Point blank period. And if you were somebody that was like me and you had the awareness that I have, you would be shocked about how sometimes the littlest things can have a deep, deep meaning and they're promoted to the mass collective as something when the deeper intent behind it or the deeper agenda is to send out a psychic influence, a psychic suggestion. Basically what I'm saying is that there are real black magicians like myself who know what they're doing when they are promoting certain types of influence to the mass collective. And the mass collective just eats it up, they absorb it, like it's, oh, this is good for me, oh, this is, you know, I enjoy this, whatever it is, and they have no idea what the real intent is behind it. And oftentimes the intent behind it is very destructive in its nature. But once again, all that comes down to is a lack of self-awareness for the individuals that are openly accepting that destructive energy. Okay? So no one escapes the clip off. As I said from the beginning of this video, most people are actually existing within the clip off. Maybe a question comes up, how does that how does that even make sense? How is that possible? How is um you know, how do people get pulled into the clip off? How does that happen? I don't understand that. Well, whenever you watch a movie, and I know you listening to this right now have seen movies, okay? Whenever you listen to your favorite artist, uh, what else? Whenever you're playing video games, there are influences in these areas of life. I mean, outside of the schooling system, outside of probably how your parents are programmed, outside of the medical field, I mean, it's everywhere. But in these couple genres that I was just speaking about, movies, TV shows, video games, music, they are strategically designed to take you through rituals as you're listening or as you're visualizing these entertainment avenues. I've seen it over and over and over again in the movie theaters because I have an A-list membership so I see movies all the time. And you can see the same patterns over and over and over and over. And they are strategically designed to take you through an entire ritual that always leaves you and leads you into the clip off. And there are real psychic formulas, real psychic technologies, and real occult sciences that can actually cause those entertainment avenues to energetically pull you into a demonic or into a dark energy anti-universe. You may think I'm making this stuff up, and that's fine. Go ahead. By all means, I'm not here to convince you of anything. I'm just sharing what I know. And I know there's a lot of people that are receiving what I'm talking about. Because who else do you know that's talking about this stuff? But as I'm saying, it's happening. And it happens all the time. And it's a direct pathway into hell. Now, is that necessarily a bad thing? And is that wrong? And if it happens to you, are you stuck forever? No, not at all. It's only happening because you're not aware of what's going on inside of yourself. So when you start that process of 
drawing your awareness inwards and realize that maybe there are some things that you think or believe about yourself that aren't true. And once you come to terms with allowing yourself to be honest, deeply honest with who you are and what you've been through, then you can start really reflecting and feeling some of those pains that are inside of you that are causing you to be filled with anxiety, that are causing you to be evasive, that are causing you to be fearful, that are causing you to be angry all the time, that are causing you to be jealous. Because once you start feeling these things, now you're processing them, now you're healing them. And then from that point, you can start embracing the tree of life more, if that's what you want to do. Start embracing the more so positive influences of this multiverse, which leads down to the positive polarity. Now, if you're somebody like myself, who is a black magician, who is consciously walking the negative polarity because it's a path of service to the self and building an empire and having a certain level of control over the multiverse, if that's the path that you want and that's the path that you're truly gravitating towards on some level, then clearly the tree of death is a place that you want to be. It's a place that you want to stay. You want to actively initiate within that tree. You want to actively invoke the entities that are the hierarchical gatekeepers of that tree. You want to attune yourself to the negative polarity by slowly but surely becoming a universe B vampire. For anyone that's interested, you can become one at the top tier in my Patreon, first link in the description. Now, this is just life in how there's a positive and a negative pole. So you can imagine trying to live life pretending like the negative is wrong and that it doesn't have its place and trying to suppress it. You can imagine how that's going to cause inherently somebody to shell themselves because they're not being honest. They're not being truthful with the reality of the universe. You can pretend all day long with a battery when you put it into a flashlight, you can pretend the negative doesn't exist. But the second you try to cut off that negative charge and put it in the battery, the light's not going to turn on anymore. So you're only fooling yourself if you're trying to avoid dark energy. See, the key is to understand it and when it shows up to process it. Whatever path you're on, clearly if you're on the negative path, you need to have a knowingness of what dark energy does for you and you need to have a knowingness on how to process it because you're actively opening those doors to negative energy, dark energy. But if you're on the positive polarity, you're not actively inviting it into your life you're not consciously saying, hey, I want darkness around me. I want to experience, you know, I want to learn about destructive energies and psychic warfare and how to increase personal power. But rather, dark energies will naturally come into your life to test you to see, are you someone that's focused on your evolution? Are you someone that's focused on the specific path that you're walking? Because if you are, then whenever a dark energy shows up in your life and it tests you, then you can simply acknowledge it for what it is, you can understand it, you can appreciate it, and continue on your path and continue evolving. But if you're somebody who thinks you're on the positive polarity and you're making evolutionary progress and then a negative energy comes in and tries to interfere with that and it actually stops you from making progress, it makes you question yourself to the point where you don't even want to walk the path anymore or it makes you just give up. It makes you stop pursuing your journey and giving in to lower things like unhealthy relationships, addictions, attachments. Then you were never really walking the path. And that's what dark energy does. It tests you. It sees what are you really about? How are you really evolving? And sometimes people get taken off their path by dark energy and then they realize they want to change, make a transformation and they go back to the path and it becomes a lesson. 
Okay, I'm just trying to explain how this entire process functions on both sides. All right, but once again, focusing more so on the tree of death, the clip off, just like what we see on the tree of life with all the different planetary energies from Earth, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, the Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, Saturn, Neptune, and Pluto. On the tree of life, it's giving you more so of that positive influence of those planetary spheres. And then clearly on the tree of death, it's going to give you the negative influences of those planetary spheres. So let me give you a little bit of an example of a generally known positive planet that also has a negative side to it. So we look at the sphere of Jupiter, which is called Chesed. And Jupiter is traditionally associated with mercy, associated with good fortune, expansion, higher level truth, and sometimes even travel. But when you look at that sphere within the Klippoth, the name changes from Chesed into Gag Shabla. And the darker aspect of Jupiter is someone who is living a life that has a lot of fortune in their life but they are being distracted by all the fortune and all the wealth and all the nice things that are in their life to the point where they're not focused on their true self, where they're not focused on their soul. They're consuming everything within the material plane or consuming everything in regards to the matrix and how it tries to grab your attention. And this person has a lot of nice things. They're in a good position. They're popular, but at the same time, they don't know their true self and they may be carrying an internal sadness or an internal depression, but you would never know on the outside. And that would be the negative influence of Jupiter. Okay, so there is a negative aspect to it as well as a positive. On the positive side, it's somebody who's happy with life, understands themselves, good things come to them through the principle of as within, as without and everything is operating in harmony. But on the negative polarity, it's wonderful things comes to you. you. You put on a mask to act like you love your life and that you're this almighty, wonderful person. But deep down, you know you're not happy. And deep down, you know there is a lack of satisfaction because once again, you don't know who you truly are. And that will always be the case for people who don't know themselves. Knowing thyself is key. So when you're dealing with the clip off, you're dealing with all those negative associations with the tree. And as you are somebody who is initiating as a black magician or a negatively polarized individual, you have an opportunity to see in the world around you as you're working with every one of those spheres, those darker influences behind all the different planetary energies. You're seeing the other side. You're seeing the dark side of the moon, so to speak. So this is tr oftentimes why black magicians are known as being very primal and once again, very wise. And it's because we see the truth that hurts most people. We see and we have to face the truth that most people try to suppress and try to pretend like doesn't exist. So once again, as an initiate of the clip off, you are dealing with all these negative planetary influences directly in the self. So where are the aspects in me that maybe I have good fortune in my life or things are on the external working out for me and maybe I'm learning some level of higher truth from somebody else but then deep down these things are artificial meaning maybe I'm learning higher level truths about a job that I'm working that I know where the job is not in touch with where I'm headed or who I'm becoming. So I'm learning higher level truths on how to be successful within a job that I'm not even supposed to be at in the first place. And once again, I may be able to attract wonderful things to me like money, 
maybe certain types of friendships, who knows, uh, attention. But then deep down, I know I'm not happy and I don't know who I truly am. And all that attention is actually working against me from being able to understand my true self. So if I was dealing with the clip off and that sphere of Jupiter and its darker association, these are the things I would have to observe and ask within myself. And then ultimately, if I'm going to heal the situation to understand it, I need to let go of everything. If I am getting lots of wealth, if I am getting a lot of attention, I have to surrender that. And I have to let go of the need for more of that. If I am learning a higher level truth from somebody within a job position and I'm mastering the job position, I'm in a high level position, but at the end of the day, I know I'm not even supposed to be there in the first place. I'm supposed to transition onto something new. Then I have to surrender that attachment. I have to say, you know what? I'm good at this. I've worked really hard here and I've gotten a lot out of this, but now it's time to move on. And a lot of people don't have what it takes to do those types of things, but these are the types of things that you have to go through and you have to work with and you have to process when you're dealing with the clip off. And one thing that I've learned over the years is that clearly there is a direct association with someone's level of suffering that they go through and then after the, the suffering that they've been through, assuming that they were able to process it and work with it, that suffering always transmutes into power. I mean, think about it for a second. For people that you know in your life right now, maybe it's yourself, if you're being honest with reality, you should be able to observe that every time you've been through an experience in your life where you were just completely suffering, or if you've noticed it in somebody else's life and you went through it and you stayed consistent and you showed up every day and you didn't give in to lower things, you should be able to always recognize that on the other end of that suffering, there was some sort of an awakening. There was some sort of a realization or some sort of an energetic, you could say, empowerment within the self. And that is the natural process of evolution. Just like the tree, when you go through the initiations, it's always going between the positive, the center, the negative, then back over to the positive, then back over to the negative. So basically what I'm saying is that there is absolutely a universal principle that shows when you go through rough circumstances and suffering, it always turns into power if you can be consistent and embrace the pain and embrace the suffering. So clearly for people that are clipothic initiates, this is the tree of death. This is the tree of pain and suffering and uncomfortability. But once again, you can imagine for the people that successfully initiate, they step into large amounts of power, large amounts of enlightenment, large amounts of realization. And I will go as far as saying this, the people on our planet today that are walking the negative polarity and have done it and are doing it successfully, these people know much more about the source than your traditional light worker or your traditional positively polarized individual. So let me say that one more time. In our today's time right now, the people that are considered the real black magicians of the planet, the evil beings of the planet, are actually the beings that understand the most about the universe itself and how all of this truly is connected to the source. And this is where the wisdom comes with the negative polarity. And the reason why that is, once again, is because of the level of intended and active suffering that these types of individuals have to go through in order to obtain their dark power. So once again, in the process of non-being, 
or traveling down the tree of antimatter, you're getting more and more and more in touch with formlessness. The source in its ultimate essence is the ultimate nothingness. It's the infinite nothingness that then becomes the infinite all. So the beings that are walking that clipothic tree are actually understanding the roots of how the universe itself was designed. And that trickles into how human beings behave, how they think, how they act, how they feel even. And it's the black magicians, the real ones, that actually understand this and know this and that is a complete byproduct of why these are the people that rule the multiverse on this type of planet, that rule the matrix on this type of planet. It's all designed by intelligent law. This is not for no reason. It did not happen by accident. Once again, let me say that. There is a reason why real black magicians, real negatively polarized beings, control this multiverse. It is not by accident. It's not because you made a mistake. It's not because the love and light workers aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. It has nothing to do with that. It is a divine law that was created by the source for a specific planet like Earth within the third and or fourth density. These types of planetary spheres with the third density are meant to have strong matrix, are meant to have a strong matrix. And most of the times that matrix is going to be controlled by the negative polarity. I mean, who else is going to create a matrix and control it? And the matrix itself all is tied to the dark mother within the universe. The essence of the negative polarity, the essence of dark energy itself. And if you study the universe, you can clearly see the universe is mostly consistent of dark energy. It is 95% dark energy. And there is an entity that's associated with that, which is known as the Dark Mother, that has gone under many other names in many different aspects, like Lilith, like Kali, like Hecate, like Tiamat, like Leviathan. All right, the black dragon. So for those of you that are studied when it comes to the occult in general, you should know that it's that dark feminine energy that has rulership over the physical plane, over the matrix. And the beings that are of the negative polarity were essentially assigned and created by the Dark Mother to become the avatars of the Matrix in the sense of the ones that control it. And clearly the Dark Mother comes from the source just like everything else does. So all of our roots ultimately are connecting back to that source but when it comes primarily to the negative polarized beings, the real black magicians that walk this planet, we are designed and we are intelligently I, the word truly is created by the dark mother force, the Leviathan, the black dragon, the mother of the universe itself. She is the one that creates the polarity and she does it under source principles, not to be hateful, not to be evil, not to just be ignorantly destructive, but to challenge people, to cause people to go through catalysts so they can further their evolutionary progress. That's why the source has the dark mother in the first place and allows the dark mother to create negatively polarized beings. Okay, maybe you're starting to put all these pieces together, but once again, the tree of death in the clip off is ultimately governed by the dark mother. It's all those influences, those negatively polarized primal chaotic influences of all the planetary spheres that nobody can escape. We all exist within the Dark Mother. And we all truly, you know, in a sense, 
came from the Dark Mother. We are all from that dark feminine energy that is represented as the universe itself. But once again, there are some individuals that are more so chosen and more so energetically connected and associated with the Dark Mother who choose to walk the negative polarity. So with that being said, everything that I've shared in this video should really give you a solid perspective on the tree of death, on the hell realms that exist, and how they influence the world that we live in today. You are not going to escape the clip off. So the key is to be open to it, not, not necessarily to dive directly into it unless you're somebody like myself, a black magician. But the key is ultimately to at least be open to it, to be accepting of it, and to appreciate it so that you can get to where you need to be in alignment with cosmic law, which shows the positive and the negative are necessary for power. And once again, you're not going to fool anybody but yourself if you're thinking that negative energy is evil and it's wrong and you need to avoid it and suppress it and that you can find a way to not be influenced by it because I'm telling you, it will influence you. There is no escaping it in the world that we live in today and it's not a bad thing. It is not a bad thing. It's there for your growth. So learn that concept and use it to your advantage. All right? With that being said, I'm going to wrap it up there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, come down here and hit the thumbs up button. Also, come down here and hit the notification bell because I post videos as often as I can. And with content like this, you absolutely do not want to be missing out. Also, come down here and hit the subscribe button because if you're not yet subscribed, to my public channel, then you're making a very big mistake because you could further be linking into the content by subscribing. There really is an energetic component that goes behind that. All right? Now, with that being said, I'm going to now take your awareness to the most important link within the entirety of the YouTube description itself. This is the first link in the YouTube description. You can't miss it below. That is going to be my Patreon. On my Patreon, I have an entire vault of exclusive occult content where none of this content is on my public YouTube channel and that is for many intentional reasons. It's not meant for the mass collective, okay? It's meant for people that are taking their practices a little bit more seriously. I have content that is similar to this video right here. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely check out the Patreon. I have content in the form of live streams with tons of valuable information embedded within them. And then I have content in the form of what I call practical content, which is me performing occult practices on camera while teaching you how to perform them for yourself. Very valuable. And all these different forms of content are going to be more advanced and more personal than what you're getting here on my public channel. As you move into tier three and up, you're gaining access to an entire magic training course, which I feel like would be extremely valuable, especially if you're a beginner occultist and you're looking for a structured format to follow to start developing your psychic capabilities. And then as you move into tier four, this is the top tier of the Patreon, but this is also the most popular tier of the Patreon and that alone speaks for itself. This is what's called the Universe B Vampire Service. Now what I do for this is I perform an advanced occult ritual on all of the participants, whether that's new or reoccurring, to completely change their energetic structure to be more so universe B dominant, which essentially means more so negatively polarized. So every month that you receive this service, it is furthering your negative polarity. And what this means is that these individuals now have an ability to exist within the darker energy areas and locations of the multiverse itself, aka the Klebothic realm, without inherently getting harmed by them, but rather developing knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and potential power from them instead. It also gives these individuals an ability to be more so receptive to their unconscious and their subconscious minds, 
which is feminine in nature in association with the dark mother force. And it also gives them a psychic capability to pull an energy from dark energy and chaos in the environment, ultimately to transmute into their own power and evolutionary potential, hence why it's called the Universe B Vampire Service. If this is something that intrigues you and you want to take advantage of it, you can definitely do so. Top tier, tier number four, first link in the YouTube description. We are going to leave it there. With that being said, I want to give a special shout out to everyone specifically who is a Patreon member for taking your knowledge, your practices, and your studies to that other side. Big shout out to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now we're moving into the second link below. This is the second link. You can't miss it. In the second link, you can book a very unique tarot card reading with me. Okay, This is a tarot card reading that I promise you've never received before. And the reason is, is because I understand the Kabbalistic tree way more than the average person. So what I can do is I can literally pinpoint you exactly where you are on that Kabbalistic tree. I can tell you what you're feeling, experiencing, and going through in the present moment, then tell you what to expect moving into your near and your long-term future, all based on your positioning on that Kabbalistic tree itself. All right. If this is something that you want to take advantage of, definitely do so. I've done well over 800 readings at this point. I do a reading every single day, and I've received tons of valuable feedback. Okay, second link below. We'll leave it there. Also, within that same second link below, you have an option to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. So if you want to do a FaceTime call or some sort of a video call, second link below, there's an option to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. And then I have other options for mentorship, which is a six-week mentorship and a three-month mentorship. This is going to be for individuals that are really taking their practices to that next level. If these things interest you, definitely check it out. Once again, in that same second link below, you can see those services. All right. Now we're going to move into the third link in the YouTube description. This is the third link below. You can't miss it. This is where you can join and become a YouTube member. As you become a YouTube member, you're gaining access to many different types of benefits. But most importantly, you're gaining access to what I call and what I've designed called the Psychic Warfare Emoji Program. What this is, is this is a sequence of emojis that can be used in a certain configuration and then you link in the name of a target, hit enter, and it actually causes psychic effects to the target of your choice. This is the most simple form of utilizing psychic warfare through the internet platform. And there are almost 2,000 posts where individuals have used this service already. And there are even people right now in this moment that are using it as we speak. If this is something that you want to take advantage of for yourself, you can definitely do so. Third link in the YouTube description, join and become a YouTube member. All right. Other than that, that's where I'm going to wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate all of you very, very, very much. And I hope you all have an amazing rest of the day or nights wherever you are. And I will see you in the next uh, video. Peace.